Thank you for the opportunity to present on working together to develop the early hearing and talking observations or ECHO checklist for early childhood educators. My name is Isabel O'Keefe and I'm a non-Indigenous researcher with a background in linguistics based at the National Acoustic Laboratories in Sydney. I'm presenting today on behalf of members of the team that includes other researchers from the National Acoustic Laboratories, a speech pathologist from the Dyslexia Spelled Foundation, and a Wiradjuri public health researcher based at the University of Newcastle and Lower G Institute, Dr. Michelle Kennedy. Before I begin, I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land where the head office of the National Acoustic Laboratory sits, the Watamadigal clan of the Darug Nation, as well as the traditional owners of all the lands where people are joining from today. I pay my respect to elders past and present. I extend respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander colleagues and friends we work alongside, including the Aboriginal Research Leadership Team who provided oversight for this study, and all the First Nations early childhood educators who contributed such insight, important insights to improve hearing health pathways for First Nations children. I also extend my respect to any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people attending the conference today. So why is a tool like ECHO needed? for early childhood educators to observe and monitor how a child is developing their hearing, understanding and talking skills. Are particularly early childhood educators working with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander children? We know that there are high prevalence rates of early, serious and persistent middle ear infections, or otitis media, OM, and related hearing problems among Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander children even in urban locations. OM in this population typically starts within the first eight weeks of life and can persist throughout childhood and beyond. Uh, given that the most common form of OM does not have obvious signs and symptoms such as fever, pain or discharge, the condition and related hearing loss can remain undetected and untreated. Uh, this is supported by a National Hearing Service data that shows that the peak age of first hearing device fitting occurs at four years of age for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander children, compared to around uh, in the first year of life for non-Indigenous children. Even though there are a number of reasons for this, it is clear that detection and support is happening too late for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander children. Uh, this is because OM and related hearing loss can have long-term impacts on the development of children's speech, language and listening skills, as well as on their physical, developmental and emotional well-being. Given the consistency and frequency with which early childhood educators interact with children, they, as well as parents and carers, are uniquely placed to help minimise and alleviate the negative impacts of chronic ear disease by facilitating the early identification of possible hearing and communication difficulties and helping with support. The Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander early childhood educators we were working with on another project in an early learning centre in urban New South Wales said that they needed a simple tool to systematically pick up difficulties. They wanted something like the functional listening and communication checklists um, used with caregivers, the parent evaluated listening and understanding measure, PLUM, and hearing and talking scale, HATS. That's because these early childhood educators had trialled the PLUM and HATS. Uh, they liked the tools, but they'd identified issues with feasibility. In a busy early learning centre, being able to sit down with parents and carers to talk through these checklists simply wasn't feasible. They really wanted a tool that they could use to record their own observations of children, which would be far more feasible. And they felt that the existing developmental checklists they were using there did not have enough questions about hearing and talking. We therefore aim to address this need for a tool by co-developing an observational checklist with early childhood educators to enable them to identify children with possible listening or communication difficulties, facilitate conversations uh, with caregivers about these possible difficulties, 
and to monitor children's progress over time. As a sub-project, a part of a wider Plum and Hat project, we already had an Aboriginal research leadership group in place who helped to provide oversight of all of the research, including this project, sub-project. And they also provided advice on the ethics amendments needed for this sub-project uh, with the Aboriginal Health and Medical Research Committee of New South Wales and Hearing Australia's Human Research and Ethics Committees. Once we had ethics approval, we conducted two co-design workshops with early childhood educators, which were led by Wiradjuri researcher, Dr. Michelle Kennedy. The first workshop was an initial scoping session. The discussion involved things such as how early childhood educators currently monitor and identify children who may have hearing or communication difficulties across the different age ranges, uh, the pros and cons of some other developmental checklists that they had used, and how the ECHO checklist could be a complementary tool, uh, particularly to Plum and Hats. The early childhood educators also identified some key requirements for the ECHO checklist. They wanted it to be short and simple, to be completed uh, for a particular time period rather than a single time point, and the age brackets needed to be the same as the existing checklists they were using to, be, uh, to allow comparison. The early childhood educators wanted concrete examples that would allow them to check their intuitions and to have further discussions with other early childhood educators, the family connector, and with parents and caregivers. And they helped brainstorm examples uh, for each age group. We also discussed the scoring methods and a Likert scale with three to five options was preferred. Uh, we combined their ideas along with information from a review of the literature on hearing and talking developmental milestones to draft the prototype of the ECHO checklist for feedback and further refinement. The second workshop was a trial and feedback session which involved three of the early childhood educators are trialling the prototype of the ECHO checklist by thinking of a child in their care and answering the questions in the checklist based on the behaviours they'd observed for the child over the past two weeks. Early childhood educators then provided feedback to the group about the wording of questions and the examples on the checklists and provided additional examples relevant to their particular early learning environment. On completion of the second workshop, we produced a final draft of the ECHO checklist prototype. Four early childhood educators then trialled this final draft prototype during their work at the Early Learning Centre and provided further feedback, which I'll discuss briefly after showing you some examples from the ECHO prototype. Um, there's an age group there at the top listed and the checklist was divided into seven different age groups. Uh, the age groups were primarily based on those used in the existing developmental checklists used by the Early Learning Centre, which was something the early childhood educators were keen to have so that it would allow for comparisons and reduce the burden when they were filling out these checklists. The questions were divided into those for hearing and talking, I'm um, sorry, hearing and understanding, and talking. The questions all start with does the child and then provide concrete examples of what this can look like. For each question, the early childhood educators would think about the child's hearing and talking behaviours that observed over the previous two weeks and mark whether they showed the behaviour or skill not yet, sometimes or often a lot. There was also space, there's also space for notes. Uh, instructions that were put together at the start of the checklist were based on what the early childhood educators uh, had wanted to include, including saying that the ECHO is not a test, so early childhood educators need to try to observe these skills in natural settings and situations where the child has the best opportunity to de demonstrate the behaviours or skills. Um, we also talked together about uh, the basic instructions for the prototype and um, we decided that for scoring, if a child is scoring not yet or sometimes for one or more of the items, that early childhood educators would follow up with colleagues in their early learning centre and then they or other appropriate people within the early learning centre would then be able to follow up with caregivers of a child. Uh, these in, this slide includes two examples of the hearing and understanding questions for two different age brackets. So for the birth to three months age bracket, an example question is, 
does the child react or respond to people's voices? What this can look like, the examples that we came up with um, were calming down, becoming still, smiling and starting or stopping sucking when someone talks or calming down when someone sings. For the four and five-year-old bracket, an example question is, does the child react to softer sounds in the room or outside? And what this can look like, examples that the early childhood educators gave were noticing birds chirping, tuning in when someone starts whispering. Four early childhood educators uh, trialled the final draft of the ECHO prototype during their work at the Early Learning Centre over a two week period. Uh, all of them reported that the checklist was easy to use and that the items were relevant to the Early Learning Centre environment. They said they were able to observe the behaviours uh, during their interactions with the children and they found it helpful to consider a period of time instead of a single observation. Uh, they believed that they could complete the ECHO checklist as part of routine practice and that it would be feasible uh, within the busy environment of early learning centres. Further research and co-development are certainly needed to ensure that all of the questions and examples are appropriate across different early learning centre contexts, including in rural and remote communities and linguistically diverse communities. Additionally, further work is needed on scoring and potentially validating the tool, as well as on mapping local referral pathways for children who may be identified as needing further support. In the co-development of the checklist prototype, we sought to prioritise the expertise and experiences of early childhood educators to create a tool that would allow them to check their concerns about children's hearing and talking skills and to give them concrete examples to discuss with colleagues and with caregivers. Early childhood educators are uniquely placed to help identify children with hearing and communication difficulties and to monitor children over time. We hope that with further work, this checklist will provide a tool to help support and complement the Plum and Hats tools, which draw on the deep knowledge that parents and carers have of their child's hearing and communication behaviours, uh, as well as really tapping into these unique insights of early childhood educators. We would welcome any of your feedback, comments and questions, so please email me and we will be in contact. And we really want to acknowledge and thank all the people who made this work possible, including the Early Learning Centre managers, Jodie Bell and Mary Chatfield, the early childhood educators who participated in the co-design workshops, the Aboriginal Research Leadership Team led by Dr Michelle Kennedy, Professor Kelvin Kong for sponsoring this study as part of the NHMRC Centre for Research Excellence in Ear and Hearing Health of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Children, which funded the study through a grant, and all of our colleagues in the Communication Sciences Department at the National Acoustic Laboratories. Thank you so much for listening today, and I will just put up a slide with some references, uh, and we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.